So a collection of D flip-flops is called a memory register and in Dr. Muley's book uh, this figure here shows a 4-bit memory register so you can see we have four edge trigger D flip-flops and uh, you need a flip-flop per bit that you're going to uh, store with the register. So here's the schematic uh, symbol. You can see there's four Q outputs, uh, four D inputs, and we've got our clock input. Uh, this diagram here just shows that um, if you have um, more than uh, a four bit register, um, it's just that you need a register bit per bit. So you know, let's say you have an 8-bit register uh, where you're holding uh, data that's 8 bits in width. Well, you're going to need 8 edge trigger D flip-flops because, again, you need a bit per or a flip-flop per bit um, in order to store all the bits um, that the register is designed for. Okay, here's um, a timing diagram example where um, we have an 8-bit uh, register. You can see there's 8 bits um, for a Q output and also 8 bits for a D input along with our clock. So in a timing diagram like this, and this is a, we'll make this a rising edge triggered register. Um, so the rising edges of the clock are the ones that matter. And I don't think we'll do all these, but we'll do enough where you could finish the timing diagram, um, the part that we don't um, complete. So uh, at the time of the rising edge of the clocks, that's when the Q output will equal what the D input is. So uh, our first instance again of a rising edge is right here. So prior uh, to this first rising edge, uh, we don't know what the Q output is. So like we've done in previous timing diagrams, you know, I would just put an X here just to indicate we don't know that value. But at this time, uh, our D input is a hex 1A. So that's what we're going to have um, at the time of that first rising edge is that's when uh, Q will equal D, so the Q output will become hex 1A, and it will stay 1A until the next rising edge right here, where now uh, it will change to a hex E0. Okay, and the Q output will remain uh, this data here until the next rising edge comes along and at this next rising edge well now uh, the Q output will equal the D data which is hex 29. Okay, So just like a D flip-flop, a register made out of D flip-flops, uh, the Q output uh, will equal D on the appropriate uh, clock edge which again in this case was the rising edge and you should be able to finish uh, the rest of this time diagram on your own. Okay, now this example for this uh, memory register, uh, we have an added input, this LED or LD. LD stands for load. And the load input is like an enable input. Uh, as mentioned in a previous lecture, the enable input on a flip-flop um, that activates the flip-flop to operate. So um, basically the flip-flop it won't do anything until uh, the enable is activated. Well, as I said earlier, the memory registers, and as we saw in the diagrams earlier, uh, memory registers are just a collection of um, edge trigger D flip-flops. So each one of those edge trigger D flip-flops would have an enable input all connected together that goes to this load uh, input that's shown in the uh, schematic here. So in order for uh, the register to function, the load input has to be 
uh, activated. And this load is an active high and it's synchronous. Okay, so this is an active high. Active high and it's synchronous. Uh, remember, synchronous does depend on the clock. So um, the first time that the load input goes high is right here. So prior uh, to the load going high, we don't know what the value of this Q output is. We're not given in enough information to determine what the um, initial Q output is. So I'm going to put an X here. And since this load input is synchronous, um, it's not enough just for it to become active. It's not enough for it just to become a 1. We also have to have uh, the clock edge. And this is a, a rising edge triggered register. So it's not until this first rising edge of the clock that now the load will happen. So you see Q is going to be unknown uh, up until this time right here when this uh, load is high and also the rising edge of the clock occurs that now this data on the D input, the 1A uh, hex will now be uh, at the Q output. So that this is the time at which Q equals D and becomes equal to 1A. Okay, so we look at the next rising edge of the clock here. And at this time, the load input is not activated. It's a zero. So that means the load's not going to happen because in order for the flip-flop the function the load the load input has to be um, has to be activated with the one so even though we're on a clock edge uh, the Q equal to D doesn't occur because the load is zero and Q is just gonna stay it's just gonna stay at 1a what it was previously okay and then the next clock edge comes along right here And at this clock edge, well, the load input is a 1, so Q will equal D, and it will become a hex 29. Okay, so it's just when you have this load input, that load input has to be activated, in this case a 1, uh, at the time of the rising edge of the clock in order for Q equal to D. If not, then the Q output's just going to stay what it was. The load's not going to happen. And then finally, this last example, it's just like the previous one, um, where again you have a load input that's synchronous, and uh, this is a rising edge, rising edge triggered register just like uh, the previous ones. Uh, what's different in this timing diagram and for this particular register is that we have a clear input, and that clear input this bubble tells us it's active low. You know, th sometimes um, active low inputs are indicated with a bar, like we saw a previous uh, timing diagram in a previous lecture where there was a bar over R and S for active low reset and set. Uh, but this is another way that an active low input can be identified with the little bubble uh, on the um, on the schematic diagram so here um, right at t equal to zero the clear is low and also we're told I forget to point this out but right here we're told that it's asynchronous okay, it's an asynchronous uh, clear so that means it doesn't depend on the clock so uh, clear is the same as reset Right, clear is just another word for reset. So just like when reset is activated, Q becomes zero. Same thing, when clear becomes activated, Q equals zero. So Q is going to start out zero. And then the 
first clock edge occurs here and notice that the clear becomes unactivated here right it goes to a one so we're no longer clearing at this point um, but the output Q will stay low until the time of this first rising edge and at the time of this rising edge the load input is a one so Q will equal D so Q is going to be a zero up to this time and then right here it becomes equal to D so it becomes equal to hex 1a and for the rest of this time here the clear is unactivated so during that time it's going to depend on what the load input is equal to and uh, what the D input is equal to uh, at the time of these rising edges. So here at this uh, time of this rising edge we have the load input equal to a 1 so um, Q will equal D so Q will become a hex E0 okay and here um, again you're gonna have Q equal to D again you're gonna have Q equal to D but at this time here yeah, at this time here because the load input is equal to zero at the time of this rising edge of the clock well Q is just gonna stay what it was okay it's not gonna equal D because again in order for um, something to change th this load input would have to be activated and equal to a one and then the last thing here is at this time you can see right here the clear goes low again so again since this clear is uh, asynchronous no matter what the Q output was beforehand it will just become a zero at that point